What's going on everybody, it's Charles. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to replace a valve cover gasket to fix an oil leak. Valve cover gaskets are probably one of the most common places for engine oil to leak. In fact, we did a whole step-by-step -step on diagnosing oil leaks on this particular car and we're just now getting around to actually fixing it. And big thanks to Advanced Auto Parts for partnering with us on this and many other videos. Their support has been crucial to keeping this old junkyard autocross car running. Now, real quick, the Miata is probably the easiest valve cover gasket in the entire world. Even if your car is a little different or a little harder, the steps and the processes that we use for this one can pretty much be applied. For this one, we're not gonna need a ton of tools, but we wanna make sure that we have some brake parts clear and some rags to clean up any residual oil you might have on the engine. And as always, make sure you're following the repair manual for your car. You really wanna do everything you can to set yourself up for success. A quick tip on jobs like this, I love sliding a piece of cardboard under to catch any dirt or debris that might come off of our engine when we're cleaning it. Before you start taking anything off of the valve cover, it's a good idea to blow any dirt or debris or anything off that valve cover so that when you take the valve cover off, all the stuff that was on top of it doesn't fall inside your engine. Before we get our valve cover off, we need to take out all the accessories and stuff that's attached to the valve cover. We're gonna start with our spark plug wires. Luckily, ours are numbered, and also the lengths make it pretty easy to go back in the right spot. If you need to though, go ahead and label your spark plug wires to make sure you get them back where they belong. Now, if you don't have spark plug wires like this Miata and you have coil on plug or some other version, you're going to have to take those off and get them out of the way. What you have attached to the valve cover, of course, is going to vary by car and engine and all that. We also have our PCV valve right here that I'm going to take off. Now, because this car is pretty old, this pipe right here is very hard and brittle. So we need to be super careful so that I don't break it. There. We also have this hose here we're gonna take off. So I struggled a little bit getting this hose off the valve cover. Rather than fighting it and risk breaking it, I'm just gonna pull this hose off the air intake and leave it on like that. We also have one electrical connector. Now the Miata has two brackets at the back here of the valve cover that we're gonna have to unbolt so we can get the valve cover out. They're kinda hidden, but not too terribly tough to get to. And the other one here is on the driver's side at the back. Ugh, and it's very tight. Go slow here in case any of the bolts are different lengths. You can keep them organized. In our case, it looks like all the bolts are the same length. Now we can go ahead and unbolt our valve cover. Typically, you want to work from the outside bolts moving in sort of the opposite way we would when we torque the valve cover down. This is not always super vital, but it's also not a bad habit to be in. Now, before you go trying to pry and yank your valve cover off, do a double check and make sure you got all your bolts and you don't have anybody hidden. Looks like we're good. Then I usually take a tiny pry bar and then find a good, easy place to pry where you're not gonna damage maybe the cylinder head and gently pry up in a few spots if you can. And then once you're loose, you can go ahead and gently and carefully take your valve cover off. Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. Let's go ahead and get our valve cover mating surface cleaned. Start by picking out any old RTV that may be left over. You wanna make sure that you don't drop that stuff into your engine. This is what you have to do when you accidentally knock a piece of that RTV into the engine. So be better than me and don't do that. But do get that nice and clean for your new valve cover gasket. Yeah. Okay, here is our valve cover. As you can see, our old gasket is actually not as brittle as I expected it to be. Oftentimes when these get really old, they'll get super hard and crunchy and they actually just crumble apart while you're trying to take them off. We can also see some evidence of repair with a little bit of sealant right here in the corners, which is not a bad thing. This is actually something we're gonna do as well. Now we can go ahead and take our old gasket off all the way around. Sometimes there's captive bolts in some valve covers where the bolts go through. So be careful when you take the gasket out, you might lose all your bolts onto your bench. 
We'll get this out of here. Also a tip, if your valve cover gasket is not all one piece like this one, make sure that you get new spark plug well gaskets. This is a common place for valve covers to leak in addition to on the corner. So you wouldn't wanna just replace the outside and not these well gaskets. Luckily for us, this is all one piece. Next, we're gonna get all this cleaned out as best we can. This is also the point where you want to really look for any damage to the valve cover, maybe a crack, something like that. We would definitely not wanna put a cracked valve cover back on our car. Now, before we put our new gasket in, I'm gonna flip this over and I'm just gonna do some basic cleaning and try and make this look a little nicer. We're not doing a super decorative valve cover job yet, but I also don't wanna put it back with all this oil all over the place. We're doing the work, right? So we want it to look nice. We'll go ahead and hit it with a little bit of brake parts cleaner and then give it a little scrubby scrub. You can also use degreaser for this as well if you'd like and make sure you're working in a well ventilated area. Once you're as clean as you really wanna spend the time to clean it anyway, time for our new gasket. What I like to do is I like to lay the gasket out and sort of test fit it to make sure I have it in the right orientation. This one's pretty easy because there's two humps on the front side and a one humper on the back side, so you can't put it on even remotely wrong. Before we get our gasket set in the channels though, we need to do one final thing, and that's take a little bit of RTV in the corners of the gasket. So if you look right here, you can see this gasket makes a pretty dramatic curve. We wanna put a little RTV right in that little channel right there to help for sealing. So with our gasket roughly laid out, we'll take a little RTV here, just like a little dab. You don't really need much at all. Then what you can do is set it in the little channel of the valve cover. So what I do is any place where there's a really dramatic turn of the gasket, I'll put a tiny bit of RTV. We're just gonna work that gasket in. Make sure it's pushing in as far as it'll go. That'll help when you install it that you don't roll the gasket. Now we are gonna take our RTV and we are going to put it back in the corners here. Again, you don't need a ton. Okay, now get your valve cover, make sure everything's clean. Do another check and make sure that you are all tucked in with your gasket. We wanna make sure that we don't roll this gasket when we install it. So make sure she's pushed all the way down. Yeah. The big part you're gonna wanna pay attention to is at the back. This is gonna be the easiest place to roll the gasket. We'll flip her over and install it. I also like to just take my eyeballs and look around the whole area to make sure one side's not standing up really high, because that's usually an indicator that you rolled the gasket. Okay, we got our valve cover on. Doesn't look like we rolled any gaskets. Let's drop our bolts on in. Something to keep in mind is that most valve covers or things like valve covers, cylinder heads and that, will have a torque sequence and a torque value that you have to hit. They are both potentially pretty important. So you wanna make sure you follow them. The Mazda one is really weird because we start in the middle and kind of work our way uh, anti-clockwise it would be, which is very different from how Volkswagen does it. So however your car is, follow your manufacturer's repair manual. And I always like to start these bolts by hand. You may need to like wiggle the valve cover just a little bit, wiggle it just a little bit, but anyway, I like to start them by hand so that we know when we go to snug them down, we're not gonna cross thread them. Then what I like to do is I like to just snug them down usually with a power tool, but we're not trying to send them home. Just snug them up and that's all. So the way this torque sequence is on this valve cover is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. And then the torque value is 43 to 78 inch pounds. Be very certain that your torque wrench is set to inch pounds, not foot pounds, or pound inches, not pound feet. That is not very tight. I have mine set to 55 inch pounds. 
55 inch pounds is not very much. Three. And then even though we already torqued these because we've torqued the rest of the valve cover down, we need to double check it. Notice how I'm able to turn this. 12 and then 13. That one was basically loose after tightening the whole thing, which is why I usually go around twice on valve covers. Especially when it's just like a torque value, not like a torque value plus a, a certain amount of turns. And these are all super easy to get to, so it's definitely worth it. Now that we have our valve cover bolted down, we can go ahead and put everything back where it goes, including our spark plug wires. We'll just get those kind of set in place. We need to get our two bolts here for the back bracket. For this back bracket, I feel like uh, starting both bolts and then tightening them down is probably the way. Make sure you plug any connectors that you disconnected back in. Also, there is a seal, probably not a terrible idea to take it off and replace that O-ring if you're going this far. We're gonna be doing a timing belt on this engine pretty soon, so we'll probably do it at that point. As we kind of wrap this up, I wanna make sure that I replace the PCV valve. This is a super easy, cheap maintenance item on a lot of cars, unless you're working on a European car, then it's not cheap and usually not easy. But I do have a new one here that we're gonna replace. So we'll get the old one out, put a little lubrication on here, plug it in. Also, this gasket here where the PCV valve goes into the valve cover is another one that's probably not a bad idea to replace. I actually don't have one, so uh, I'm not gonna replace it. But when we do the timing belt, we'll do that. So we'll lubricate both sides where our hose goes in, slide our hose on. You can see it's cracked a little. So we'll probably need to replace that at some point. If you, what I was just finding is that the PCV valve was kind of sitting crooked. All I did was reclock this hose here and that seemed to sit it down in its proper spot. Put our clamps back on. Then from here, if you want to do any further cleaning of maybe what had fallen down the side of the cylinder head, not a bad time to do it. Just make sure you're again, working well ventilated area. And before you go starting your car up, you might want to let some of that brake parts cleaner evaporate. All right, so valve covers like this are generally super simple to replace. Typically the hardest part is actually getting to it and dealing with old hoses and wiring harnesses and things like that that we have on the car. However, not all vehicles are going to be that way. Perhaps you have a V6 or a V8 engine, or what I worry about even more is an engine that the valve cover also holds the camshaft bearing. So in an engine like this, if you were to reseal the part that would basically be the valve cover, you have to deal with engine timing. This is why having the vehicle repair manual is so, so, so important so that you can be better prepared before you start and be equipped to make sure you do it right. Also, you always wanna make sure you check your work and be sure that you don't have any oil leaks after you just fix your oil leak, which I've had happen before. If you wanna see a super in-depth video on how to diagnose oil leaks, I will be sure to link that up for you. We did it actually on this exact car. With that, I'm out. Have an awesome day and I'll talk to you again next time. Bye.